Here's my light. Some of you have asked about it. It's exactly where it was since I got it. I still love it. But for video shots, I just do this. I'm just kind of swing it out of the way so we can do this. All right, don't go away. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Production coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. It's been a wonderful uh, end of the year. Christmas is gone. New Year's is in a couple days. Uh, it's just been fantastic. I'm really looking forward to the live stream uh, this coming Sunday uh, where we can talk about the whole year we just experienced and what we're going to bring to you in the new decade. It's going to be a lot of fun. But for today, we're going to be doing something. And this may be after that live stream. I, just because I'm filming it here today doesn't mean you're going to see it tomorrow. So um, I, I, I don't know. All of this may be a moot point by the time you get to see this. But today is going to be a really cool day. I'm going to tell you how I repair blown out posts on diecast cars. So let's get right to it. So here are two examples of, of posts that are blown out. And on the first one you see it's blown out the side, but it's not terrible. Uh, the second one, not only is it blown out the side, but it's, it's a really short post to begin with. So this one's really, really bad. But we can fix both of those. I start by taking an assortment of brass tubes. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. And I'm trying to find something that will fit over the post. I don't want it to be loose and sloppy. Um, too tight to go all the way down is actually even better than uh, loose. We don't want it loose. So uh, I'm just finding out what will fit and about how tall it needs to be. And I'm going to cut off a little piece that we're going to use to work with. And, uh, you know, different cars, different size tubes. And even on the same car, you might be using two different size tubes. All right, so in the back here, this post, it fits over, say, the first third of the post, but it won't go all the way down. So I'm going to just give it a couple uh, taps with a hammer to see if that will uh, seat it. And if not, there's other things we can do here. Um, but, but first, we'll just give it a couple knocks and see if it will go down. It's not going to, so we'll go back to that one later. Since that back one is going to be grumpy, let's go ahead and turn our attention to this front one uh, because this little piece of tube will fit down very, very nicely right over the top of it. Okay, so we've got the tube set down over the damaged post and we're going to break out our baking soda and we're going to start packing that tube as full as we can with this baking soda. So we'll put a little bit on and we'll tamp it down in there. Put a little on, tamp it down in there. Now don't be afraid to get the uh, blunt end of a, a toothpick or whatever else you have to really pack this baking soda in there. We want as much baking soda as we can get inside of the tube to make this as solid as possible. Okay, it's pretty full. Uh, we don't want to be too aggressive shaking off the extra, but go ahead and shake off the extra. We don't want it everywhere. Right now, we just want it inside the tube. So you can see we've got our brass tube around the damaged post, and it's chock full of baking soda. Now it's time for the super glue. You have to think of it in terms like this. There are a lot of forces being applied to these posts. When we drill into them, when we tap into them, when we screw them together, you've got compression forces, you've got forces trying to repel each other, and these posts are tall and skinny, so the sidewalls can blow out very, very easily. That means any repairs are going to have to be really, really rock solid. So we're going to start by putting a little really thin super glue right at the base just to kind of hold everything into place. 
capillary action will pull the glue all the way around the base and it'll make sure that the tube is stuck to the body. And now we can put the super glue into the tube to saturate the baking soda that is filling this little brass supporting tube. And what we're essentially doing is we're using the super glue and the baking soda to build a structure for the screw to take hold of. And we're using the brass tube as a mechanism to keep that from failing. Because as we screw into this, you're going to get a lot of side force. And it's going to be very easy for this thing to crumble and break. So by adding the tube, what we're doing is we're making sure that we're supporting the structure of the super glue and the baking soda. Okay, so the glue on the front is set up, and here you can see what we have. We've got the tube down over the old post, and it's filled with baking soda to fill all the inside voids, and then it's saturated with the super glue. So right now, this is really, really solid, and uh, we could probably stop there, but I like to put a little bit of supporting material around the outside of the tube as well. Um, but, you know, that, that's just a matter of preference and how, how weak do you think things are and does it really need it. But, hey, you know what? While we're here, we might as well really make this thing stand up good, right? So now is as good a time as any to talk about um, one of the downsides to this. Uh, we are adding a lot of material underneath the body of this car. And that is going to mean we're going to have to do a lot of testing and fitting and whatnot to make sure that all the clearance that we need is maintained. Uh, so you may have to get creative underneath here with your files and your rotary tool. Okay, so I know that the post repair is standing super proud, um, but I'm still going to go ahead and do a test fit just to get an idea of how much I'm going to need to remove. So I'm going to kind of line everything up between the body and the base. And then I can take a look at it and get some idea of what I'm going to have to do next. With a notion in my head of how far down I have to go, I can use my rotary tool and bring this post down to the right height. While we don't want to grind the post down super short, we also need to make sure that there's no real physical resistance between the, uh, the body and the base. We don't want the screw to have to pull the car together. We want the screw to hold the car together. So when we put it back together, it needs to be able to, to go together nicely and with no resistance so that the screw is just there to hold things and not really having to try and squeeze stuff together. And it's important that you don't just focus all of your attention on the post and the body. Look at the base too. Understand what's going on down there. There might be a place where you need to remove some material from the base. Get a good concept of what's going on and make sure that this thing goes together easy as pie. Let's take a quick look over here at a different project. This was the mega build with the SNS Cadillac Ambulance, and the front post was blown out. Now, it wasn't such an easy project as just being able to cut a little piece of brass tube to length and slide it down over the damaged post. No, this post on the car actually had a little support member attached to the front of it. And that made it impossible for the tube to slide down neatly. So on this project, we actually had to cut a slot 
in the brass tube so it would fit down over the post. The point being, there isn't going to be one universal answer. And as you're working through this, you're going to have to make adjustments and tweaks, and you're going to have to uh, figure some stuff out. But if you do, you're going to be able to save that, you know, that car that you thought was a goner. So it's, it's a really great technique, but no one answer is going to fit every blowout. So just like on the other car, after we got all the baking soda packed down into the tube, we can just go ahead and fill her up with some uh, super glue and let it dry. And look at that. Look at how beautiful that post repair is. It's, it's ready for drilling out and tapping. Okay, so here we are back with the Thunderbird we started with. And you can see I've used the rotary tool and I've got everything really, really close. And now I'm just kind of finalizing uh, some of the uh, finish work I have to do on this post before we try to drill and tap this thing. So one final adjustment here, and then we'll do a test fit, and I think we got her. All right, we'll just bring the base body together, line everything up, and take a look. And it looks like everything is going to fit just slick as snot. There we go. So I think we're about ready for drilling and tapping. So let's say you caught a post going awry a little bit earlier in the process. Maybe the end of it is off level, or maybe the hole is drilled off to the side and you stopped before it got too deep. What can we do there? Well, we don't need to go through a whole big thing with tubes and all that other stuff. We can break out my Vix bits and use my dr shoulder drilling techniques to go ahead and kind of even things back out, square everything back up, and give us a whole brand new fresh starting point. Basically, we're going to find a Vix bit that will fit down over the post and let the drill bit inside the shielded part do the work to square everything up and give us a nice new fresh cone in the end of the post where we can finish drilling. Okay, so let's talk a bit about uh, drilling out the repaired posts. Uh, it's imperative that you drill slowly and evenly and with as little pressure as possible. Uh, after all, this is a repaired thing and we don't want to blow it out if we don't have to, so uh, it's really important to go slow. If you don't have Vix bits, which I highly recommend, um, you can also put the body back on and in place and use that to help center your drill bit. Um, so that can help you go. Uh, but also, just remember, really light pressure. Let the drill bit do the cutting and don't force anything, okay? We've done a lot of work to repair that post. We don't want to screw it up now. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't like to tap the, the uh, drills out, uh, the drilled post out, 
this is a place where you really absolutely need to tap it out. Um, just by trying to force the screw in there and let it cut the threads, uh, the, the forces are greatly magnified and you stand a better chance of destroying your work. So I highly recommend a, a nice, good quality tap, uh, a little bit of oil, and, and just go slow, tap it, back it out, tap it, back it out. Really be gentle with this thing and cut the threads with the tap. Okay, that's going to reduce any damage. It's going to lessen the chance that you're going to destroy the work that you've done uh, and make everything just go together a lot easier. Now as to actually screwing the car back together, remember what I said, we want the screw to hold the car together. We don't want it to have to bring the car together. So if it's not just coming together beautiful and slick as snot, stop and make sure that it can do that before you try and screw it together. If you're counting on the screw going into that repair to bring everything together, uh, when it's trying to resist you, you've got a great chance of destroying your repair. So stop, make sure everything goes together perfectly, and then use the screw to hold it all together. All right, there you have it. How to repair a post on a diecast car. I got to be honest. Um, my history is I started restoring diecast cars uh, 20 years ago and all of the stuff that you're seeing and learning about now didn't exist back then and it made it virtually impossible to get good results so I stopped doing it. Um, I then picked it up about I want to say about five years ago and there was a lot more going on there and it was a lot easier to get satisfactory results but I still couldn't get a car apart without blowing out the post. Well, uh, since then, I've, I've been able to fix that issue, and I've actually been able to go back and restore some of the cars I destroyed in that era um, using this new uh, method of fixing the posts. So uh, it's, it's a really big deal. And even today, you know, let's face it, the best of us, every now and then, we're going to be rushing or doing something uh, that we shouldn't be, and we know we shouldn't be doing it, and we're going to blow out a post, and it's going to be nice to know that there's a way to fix that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the little bell, and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I really do try to talk with you guys and answer any of your questions. All right, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I am going to get out of here. Until next time, I hope you have... Uh, a blessed few days uh, uh, to end this 2019, and uh, if I don't see you again before uh, 2020, uh, I hope your year starts off with a bang. All right, till next time, be good. <sighs>